In this video, we will dive into the world of long form sales landing pages, exploring what they are and why they're effective. And also we will check out some really cool examples. Whether you're an online business owner, a marketer, or someone looking to improve your digital marketing skills, this video is for you. So sit back, grab a notebook, and let's get started. Why are long form sales pages so effective? Well, it comes down to psychology. First of all, long form sales pages allow you to provide your visitors with a comprehensive understanding of your product or service. You can highlight its features, benefits, and unique selling points in detail, leaving no room for confusion or misunderstanding. But it's not just about providing information. Long form sales pages are also great for building trust and credibility. By including social proof in the form of customer reviews, testimonials, and case studies, you can show your visitors that your product or service is trusted and respected by others in your industry. Another reason is that they give you the space to use persuasive copywriting techniques. By telling a compelling story, using emotional appeals and addressing objections and concerns, you can engage your visitors and persuade them to take action. When should you have a long form sales page? A long form sales landing page can be incredibly effective, but they're not always the right choice for every situation. So when should you use a long form sales page? Well, it depends on the following. Complexity. You should consider using a long form sales page when you have a product or service that requires a lot of education. Suppose you're selling something that's very complicated or complex or unfamiliar to your audience. In that case, a long form sales page can help you provide the necessary context and information to help your prospects to understand the value of what you're offering. A high ticket item. Another situation where a long form sales page can be useful is that when you're offering something that's expensive or requires significant investment of time or resources. In these cases, your potential customers are likely to have more questions and concerns and a long form sales page can help address these issues in a comprehensive and persuasive way. Persona or niche focused. Long form sales pages can also be effective when you're targeting a specific audience or a niche market. By tailoring your messaging and context to the unique needs and interests of your target audience, you can create a page that speaks directly to their pain points and desires. By considering the complexity of your product or service, the needs and interests of your target audience and the goals of your marketing campaign, you can determine whether a long form sales page is the best choice for your business. But let's compare it with a short form sales page. Short versus long form landing pages. I have a separate video on short form landing pages which I would highly recommend you check out. The link is in the description below. Let's look at the key features and benefits of both long form and short form pages. So long form pages are really best for technical products and higher value sales, whereas short form landing pages are best for free products and lower value sales. So the purpose is to provide comprehensive information and build trust and with a short form landing page, the purpose is to provide quick information and encourage immediate action. So if you're looking at a long form landing page, a target audience could be complex or you know aimed at selling expensive products or to a specific niche market. Whereas for a short form landing page, it could be simple or affordable products and it's typically general audiences. Copywriting techniques, it's very much focused on storytelling, emotional appeals, addressing objections. Whereas for a short form landing page, it's very concise and it's driven by urgency and there's clear call to action. The content for a long form landing page includes videos, images, graphics, and interactive elements. But for a short form landing page, I would expect something very simple and use of simple imagery and icons. On a long form landing page, the copy needs to really close the sale and the design should not precede content creation. But for a short form landing page, it's really important to have good copy, but also design plays a pivotal role. Long form landing pages typically are promoted to a colder audience who have no prior knowledge of your brand or offerings. But for short form landing pages, these are usually promoted to warmer audiences who already are familiar with your brand and offerings. Let me show you a quick example of a short form landing page. In this example, Noah has a simple newsletter signup form. And if you don't know him, chances are you will skip this page. However, if you know him, he's an entrepreneur who runs a SaaS marketplace called AppSumo. So this page only makes sense when you know Noah via AppSumo. The page is short and sweet and focuses on one goal, email newsletter signup. 
Let's look at the sales page from Alex Catoni. Let's see if you can figure out what the page is about and also if it will convince you to buy it. So the heading, write and ignite challenge. It does spark curiosity and is attention grabbing. The subheading says, learn the exact steps to writing a high converting sales page in five days. So you now know it's a course that will teach you how to write a high converting sales page in five days for $97. By framing the challenge as a problem and offering a solution that promises to solve it quickly and effectively, Alex here is leveraging the problem solution framework to make her message more compelling and attractive to potential customers. Then Alex has a strong video where she introduces herself and gives a breakdown of the course day by day and then runs through the bonuses. If you don't watch the video and skip over, then Alex calls out the persona she's targeting. Here she's calling out coaches, consultants, freelance copywriters, and making them feel welcome and heard. By identifying and acknowledging their pain points, Alex is able to connect with the target audience on a deeper level and empathize with their struggles. The solution offered also promises to teach participants the exact sales page formula and writing process that has been used to execute multi-million dollar launches and land high paying copywriting projects and clients. By positioning herself as an expert who can provide a proven solution to the pain points and challenges that the target audience may be facing, Alex is able to persuade potential customers to join the challenge and invest in her program. Next, she breaks down the course into five days, which are listed in this collapsible section. In the next section, Alex takes the storytelling approach and breaks down why she created the program and how she has used the same program to write sales copy for brands. Okay, now here is where Alex drops a bombshell. Let's break it down. This section is designed to create a sense of urgency and scarcity, using language that encourages the user to take action. The offer of a higher value product at a significantly reduced price creates the impression of a special deal that is too good to pass up. The focus on exclusivity and access to a previously unavailable formula creates a sense of privilege and importance, which can be appealing to potential customers. The use of social proof is also employed in the message as access to private Facebook group is offered as part of the package. This serves to build trust and credibility with potential customers by showing that others have found value in the product and they too can benefit from it. Additionally, Alex emphasizes authenticity and genuine value, adding sense of credibility and sincerity to the message, making it more compelling to customers. The goal is to empower and inspire copywriting that is heart-centered, empathetic, and, and authentic, in contrast to robotic, spammy, and inauthentic sales page that are prevalent online. And then finally, Alex introduces herself. In this paragraph, Alex establishes herself as an experienced copywriter and marketing strategist highlighting her successful partnerships with notable brands and authors. This serves to position her as an authority figure in the field and builds trust with potential clients by showcasing her expertise. In the second paragraph, Alex mentions her co-hosting of the Flight Club Mastermind, a high-end private membership event for internet marketing and entrepreneurs. This serves as social proof of her expertise and credibility, as well as creates a sense of exclusivity and prestige around her brand. And in the final paragraph, Alex describes the growth of the Copy Posse and its community of over 70,000 copywriters and entrepreneurs, further reinforcing her authority and social proof. The statement, we are the new school of copywriters, is a form of persuasive psychology, positioning Alex and her team as innovative and forward-thinking in the approach to copywriting, which can be appealing to potential customers who are seeking modern and effective marketing strategies. Following this, there's a series of testimonials, a bonus stack, and finally an FAQ section. That was one heck of a page. So my question to you is now, considering you're a budding copywriter and are looking to improve your skill, would you buy Alex's course for $97? Leave your comment in the box below. For your inspiration, I have put links to this current page and the original swipe we reviewed here. The links are in the description below. Now you've seen what a good sales page looks like. Let's understand its anatomy. 
sales landing page structure. Sales landing page often have a narrative structure because storytelling is a powerful tool for engaging and persuading potential customers. By presenting the product or service in the context of a compelling story, the sales page can create an emotional connection with the reader and help them understand the value of what's being offered. But what does that mean? So using a narrative structure to hook the reader and maintain their interest, begin with an attention grabbing anecdote or story that relates to your product or message. Use supporting details, evidence and testimonials to build your narrative. To explain what this means in action, let's have a look at Chris Doe's Mastermind program. This program costs $36,000, so needless to say, it's a high ticket item. So how do you sell a high ticket item with just one page? The answer is you need an effective sales letter page. Let's have a look. So this page is structured in mainly seven parts. The hero section, the solution section, story, testimonial, what's included, who this is for, FAQs. And finally, there's some CTA blocks which I've marked here in red. So the hero section. The hero section includes a headline, Radical Transformation, which suggests a bold and ambitious goal for change, one that requires a deep commitment and willingness to step outside of one's you know, comfort zone. The subheading includes a price and the CDA. However, the subheading states that Chris is offering his mastermind coaching program to a limited number of creative entrepreneurs who are ready to transform their business and take their careers to the next level. The addition of the phrase overthinkers need not apply suggests that the program may be intensive or require a high degree of focus and attention. Chris may be looking for participants who are decisive and action oriented rather than those who tend to overanalyze and second guess themselves. This phrase may be intended to attract the right type of participant and deter those who may not be a good fit for the program. So the next section, my story, it goes into the background of what caused the pain and how Chris using a mentor, Keir McLaren, was able to triple his company's revenue in the first year alone. Then Chris talks about joining the program to unlock your two potential. The testimonials. The testimonial section is pretty clever. It's not your typical testimonial section where the client is happy and they share a few lines. These reviews go into detail of how long they have worked with Chris, what results they've achieved, and some actual numbers. This section is followed by a series of questions. Here, Chris encourages visitors to think about their challenges and how they can get help to overcome them. By framing the questions as who instead of how, Chris is suggesting that they're not alone in their challenges. And there are others who have faced similar problems and found solutions. This can help build trust and credibility, as well as encourage them to take action to seek out help and guidance. Also, the questions are framed in a positive way, focusing on the potential benefits of seeking the help rather than dwelling on the challenges the reader might be facing. So this can help motivate readers to you know, take action. The next section, what's included, has a clear bulleted items on what's included. However, the text is concise and it's pretty effective. Who this is for. Chris outlines exactly who this program is for. So here he's pre-qualifying his prospects and also repelling those who he doesn't want to work with. I'll show you an example for Ali Abdel's program later where he spells out who should sign up to his program. Finally, FAQs. Answers to some objections. And finally, the last question in this list is, who is Chris Doe? But why did he leave this question as literally the last element on the page? One possible explanation is to build suspense and anticipation. By introducing the program first and providing all relevant details, it's already established the value of what he's offering. Then by revealing his profile and current work experience at the end, he can create a stronger emotional connection with the reader and help them understand why he's uniquely qualified to offer this solution. Also by leaving this question until the end, Chris may encourage re readers to scroll through the entire page and engage with the content before learning about him personally. This can help ensure that the reader is invested and interested in the program before they learn more about the person behind it. But what do you think? Would you have added his bio further up on the page? Leave your comments below. Let's now tear down Ali Abdel's sales page for his Creditpreneur program. Ali Abdel's sales page is pretty straightforward as compared to Chris Doe's one. 
The page follows the following structure. The hero section, my story, the challenges, solution, testimonials, what's included, price and guarantee, and FAQ and newsletter. In the hero section, Ali's got a headline, subheading, CT, and a video. And in his story section, Ali talks about his background and establishes credibility with his success story of going from zero to 100,000 subscribers in 18 months. This creates social proof and obviously shows the reader that Ali knows what he's talking about. The overall feeling I get from this section is that by being a creator, it is like similar to running a business and the strategies that work in the business can help find success in a creative side hustle. So obviously there's a lot going on here. The challenges. In this section, Ali uses storytelling to create a sense of reliability and vulnerability. By sharing his own experiences, he identifies common pain points that create his face, such as feeling burnt out, struggling with growth, and facing inconsistent income. This helps the reader feel you know, understood and heard. This section is more like why your creative hustle is a business. Here, Early acknowledges the challenges that creators face and emphasizes with the reader by validating their struggles. He suggests that businesses have been solving similar problems to the ones that creators face and encourages the reader to learn more about business strategies. The solution section. Here we can read the benefits of enrolling in the part-time creatorpreneur course. The purpose of the text is to persuade and motivate the reader to enroll in the course to achieve their creative goals. And in the testimonial section, I think this is overall pretty weak. If you compare this to the Chris Doe's one which we saw earlier, there's a lot which can be improved here. Then we have the what's included section, the pricing section, and the guarantee section. And as I mentioned earlier, the section about who this is for and who this course is not for is pretty good. By identifying who the course is not for, Ali can manage the expectation of potential prospects and avoid having them enroll in the course with unrealistic expectations. Then we have a frequently asked question section, a newsletter. One thing which you might have noticed is that on this page, there's very few CTA blocks or CTA buttons. I'm not sure if this was deliberate. I always recommend adding CTA buttons or blocks after every two sections. You can see there's quite a few similarities between the two sales pages which we saw. Chris has more CTA blocks, but also Ellie has a newsletter signup which acts as a secondary um, CTA. All in all, it's a very strong landing page from a structural point of view. Also comparing the two designs, Ali has used a box standard template while Chris's one looks more like a palesque. Which of these two pages do you prefer? Leave your comments in the box below. All of these swipe files, including my page blocks, can be downloaded from the link below. Here's a heads up warning. This sales page is on a different level. I'm looking at Amy Porterfield's system.skill sales page. I can spend an hour and talk about what's going on on this page. This page takes the biscuit. I'm pretty sure James Redmore has something to do with it. If you don't know James Redmore, I highly recommend you check out his training on sales pages. But let's see what's happening under the hood. On a high level, there are about 18 sections on this page. I've color coded some of the blocks so you can see how these relate to the two sales pages we saw earlier. Here are some of the highlights. Amy uses social proof like testimonials, brand mentions, and more testimonials. Apart from the regular what's included, Amy has two big fat bonuses to go with the course. This again is heavily inspired by James Wedmore's sales page framework. But there are two sections which I really want to talk about. One is the big fat guarantee and the other is right at the bottom, which I call why systems matter. Let's tear these down. In the money back guarantee section, Amy uses a common copywriting framework known as the risk reversal framework. This framework is designed to elevate fear and skepticism of potential customers by removing or minimizing the perceived risk of buying a product or service. The psychology behind this framework is rooted in the idea that people are generally risk averse and fear losing their hard earned cash on a product or service that may not deliver the promised results. So the money back guarantee serves as a safety net and giving customers the confidence to try the product without the fear of you know, losing their money. 
So Amy urges potential customers to take action and reminds them that they have nothing to lose but time. So this creates a sense of urgency and encourages the potential customers to decide without delay. So if you want to learn more about this approach, I would recommend checking out this book, The Psychology of Price, How to Price to Increase Demand, Profit and Customer Satisfaction by Leah Cadwell. The other section which I really like is the one which I call Why Systems Matter. It emphasizes the importance of having systems in place in order to run a successful business and achieve a better work-life balance. The text also acknowledges the challenges faced by entrepreneurs, particularly in the early stages of starting a business. The section concludes by introducing the Systems That Scale program, which promises to simplify and streamline business operations to reduce overwhelm and help entrepreneurs to achieve their revenue goals. I could go into detail about how she executed this page and it would take a lot of time. So I wanted to ask you if you're interested in learning more about it. If so, please leave a comment below and I'll record a separate video breaking down the psychology behind the text and the copywriting framework used on this page. James Wedmore's sales page. Well, this is the big daddy of all, a sales page to sell sales pages. So the page is so long that I couldn't even screenshot it. No matter which tool or plugin I used, it crashed my machine. If you manage to swipe it, please let me know in the comments below. I will definitely add it to my library. I'll leave this for next time, but here's a sneak peek of the page in its full glory. These examples give you a good idea of what to include, but let's list them individually so you can always get back to them when building your page. Headline and subheading. First up is the headline. This is your hook, the element that grabs readers' attention and entices them to keep reading. Your headline should clearly communicate the main benefit or unique selling proposition of your product or service. Use clear, concise language that speaks directly to your target audience. Next, we have subheadings. This helps break your content into easily digestible sections and maintains readers' interest. Subheadings should be informative and relevant, providing a clear roadmap of information you will cover on your sales page. Introduction and storytelling. A strong introduction is crucial. This sets the stage for the rest of your sales page and should establish a connection with your reader. Use this opportunity to empathize with their needs, pain points, or desires. Now let's talk about storytelling. Sharing stories or case studies can create an emotional connection with your reader, making them more invested in your product or service. These narratives can show how your offering has positively impacted others or solved specific problems. The pricing section. I think first and foremost, be transparent about your pricing. Customers appreciate clarity and hiding costs can lead to distrust. Clearly state the price of your product or service and if applicable, include any additional fees such as taxes or shipping costs. Next, justify the pricing by showcasing the value your customers receive. Break down the costs in terms of benefits, features, or even time saved. Another effective strategy is to provide context by comparing your pricing to more expensive options or industry standards. This will help make your offer seem more affordable and valuable. For instance, you can mention that similar products or services in the market might cost twice as much as yours, but you're offering the same level of quality or even better features. Don't forget to mention any discounts or promotional pricing available for a limited time. This creates a sense of urgency and encourages potential customers to take action immediately to secure a lower price. Be sure to clearly state the original price and the discounted price to highlight the savings. Finally, consider offering flexible payment options such as installment plans or multiple pricing tiers. This can make your product or service more accessible to a wider range of customers with budget constraints. Benefits, features, and bonuses. Your sales page must clearly outline the benefits and features of your product or service, explain how they address the customer's needs or solve their problems. Use bullet points or numbered lists for easy readability. And now we come to bonuses. Bonuses are a fantastic way to add extra value to your offer, making it more enticing for your potential customers. These could be in the form of additional products or services or resources that complement your main offering. Be sure to highlight the exclusivity or limited availability of these bonuses to create a sense of urgency. Social proof and risk reversal. Social proof is essentially for building trust with the audience, including you know, testimonials, reviews, or endorsements from satisfied customers or industry experts will help validate your claims and reassure potential buyers. 
A risk reversal, such as money back guarantee, can be a powerful persuasion tool. By reducing the perceived risk of making a purchase, you make it easier for customers to commit to your offer. Call to action and FAQs. Finally, your call to action or CTA is the moment of truth. This is where you tell your reader exactly what to do next, whether it's to buy now, sign up, or learn more. Make sure your CTA is clear, concise, and prominent on your sales page. Last but not the least, address any frequently asked questions or potential objections. This will help provide clarity and reassurance to your readers, making them more likely to take the desired action. There you have it guys, the most common elements of a successful sales page. By incorporating these components and tailoring them to your specific audience and offer, you'll be well on your way to creating a sales page that drives conversions and generates sales. Before we wrap up, if you found this video helpful and enjoyed the content, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing more valuable marketing insights and tips in my upcoming episodes. Also, I would like to invite you to our Discord community, where you can connect with like-minded individuals, share your experiences, ask questions, and get valuable feedback on your marketing journey. You'll find the link to our Discord server in the video description below. Thank you for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode and in our Discord community.